tutorial, we're going to learn how to animate using a cutout puppet. The first thing we're going to do is bring the puppet in. Uh, for Essentials and Advanced, we're going to bring in the Essentials and Advanced puppet right here, number four. And we're going to drag that from the library into the, uh, into the timeline. You can see our puppet actually showed up there. If I go to the Transform tool, I can see him more clearly now. The difference between the transform tool and the select tool is the select tool is for inside the art layer itself, and the transform tool manipulates the art layer. Um, and first, if I scroll through it now, you can see that he's actually got a few different swaps and or drawing substitutions. I'll go into that in a moment. And actually, the hawk's a little bit stretching, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. If I click around, I can see I can actually select the background. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off as well. Or actually, I'm going to do lock those in the timeline, that way I can't select them anymore. But I can still select my hiker character. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move him in the frame without actually animating him. And I can do this by turning off the animate layer right here and using the transform tool. However, I want to actually do this on a peg. That way I'm not actually changing the grouping layer or the pegs underneath. I'm actually going to move it with a different uh, device. And that the peg I, uh, that I was referring to basically lets me manipulate the character without changing the art. And I'm going to go into Insert and Peg. And I've added a peg to that. I can also use the plus sign to find peg and insert that. Control P. Or right clicking on the layer I want to add a peg to and then going to Insert and peg. So now that I have my pegged hiker, I'm actually going to, with the animate layer turned off, move this hiker over here, and I'm going to move the pivot so I can actually shrink him down a little bit easier. I'm going to shrink this character down a bit, move him up. I haven't created any keyframes doing this because I have the animate layer turned off, and I know the animate layer is turned off because the entire peg and the lion and the bounding box of that peg is red. If I change it to animate, the peg actually turns yellow. So now I've got the animation back on. I'm actually going to delete these four frames here because these are part of the template that I don't need. And the character disappears. So his artwork is actually only on for this first frame. So I'm going to go to frame 60. I'm going to hit F5 and extend the art layer, just like I did with the paperless animation. So now my character is there throughout the entire scene. I'm going to go ahead and hit the KF, which is actually the insert keyframe. I can also use um, I can also use F6 on the keyboard to insert a keyframe. Next, I'm going to go to frame 10 and do that again. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to take this character's arm. I'm going to bring it up. And you can see the whole arm move, that's because everything's parented in, which means if white move a bigger part of the body, a smaller part of the body moves too. The same thing goes for the neck and the head, the other arm, and the legs as well. So now I've got his hand here, I'm going to go ahead and rotate that too and fix it up a bit. I can actually move it independently of the body, but all I want to do is just get it so that it looks like the line work is matching up a little bit. So if I go through here, I can see that this is actually just popping, and that's because this frame is actually a stop motion keyframe. And I can set how these keyframes act by these two icons right here. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to set motion keyframe. And now I can see a black line between the two keyframes. That black line means that it's going to now interpolate or animate for me. And I'm going to go ahead to 20, and I'm going to make a new keyframe again. And I can actually tell the uh, program whether or not each keyframe I make is going to be stop motion or set motion by going up to the animation and clicking this. If I select this, everything will be stop motion. But since I don't have it selected, as I make my keyframes, they are going to continue to interpolate. And there's no animation here because I haven't moved it yet. So I'm going to come into here, move this arm back this way, rotate the hand a little bit. So now I have more motion. 
and I can go back in and go a bit further down. And as I do this, I can actually break down my animation. So I can actually hold off this hand rotating, and I can pull it back. So that way, as it goes, the hand doesn't turn until it gets to here. And actually, I don't want it to turn at all, now that I think about it. So I'm going to can go back in here and erase that keyframe. I'm going to go back to 10, and I'm going to actually put the hand back straight here. So that way it doesn't animate, and then it's going to animate a little bit. So I'm going to tilt it this way. And as you animate, you can keep adding frames. You can always go back in like I did before and add in more frames. Add keyframes to everything there. So have the arm go back this way, and the hand rotate that way. Add a keyframe for everyone. I can also select keyframes, copy them, and paste them in a new place. So you kind of have a, a, a decent idea of what um, working with the keyframes is like. And like I said, I can always go back in and change, change something. And that's how you can go further and get breakdowns and then continue to refine your animation. I'm going to go ahead and undo that keyframe. Another thing that's useful when it comes to puppet animation is knowing how to do eases. And eases basically ease in and ease out of the animation so it's not so... it doesn't start so starkly. So I'm going to actually slow down the start of this animation. And I can go into what I just clicked there, this icon right here, which is set ease for multiple parameters. I'll click that. And I'm going to drag this out so that it's about... let's go with 50. So it's going to slow down on the way out. I'm going to apply and close. So now if I start my animation, it starts out a lot slower than before. I'm going to go ahead and actually go fast and go to this last frame, hit stop like I did for the cutout or the paperless animation, change where my animation stops. Now another thing you note I showed before was that some of the art pieces actually have a drawing substitution. If I actually I can actually find those drawing substitutions. I can click on the hand, hit O, or center on selection here in the timeline. And I can find my hand art layer right here. And I can see that there are actually different drawing substitutions in here. These are actually different frames that are created in, for the template and can be changed at will when you're animating to give your puppet a little more life and give it a lot more personality by having multiple different hand positions. In this case, he's got a water bottle where the water is sloshing around on the inside. And with between the swaps or drawing substitutions and the keyframing with the eases, you can make beautiful animation quite quickly and easily. And that's how you animate using a cutout puppet.